Yeah, Roy, feel free to uh, share your screen, I guess, and and start with your talk, of course. Yes, I uh, will do. Yeah, the audio. So the audio I think you. Oh yeah, do you see my screen now? Sure, everything is great, so you can go for it. Yeah, uh, that's good. So hi, thank you all for being here. Uh, like, uh, if you've missed my introduction, so I'm Roy. Um, I work and live in Amsterdam, and I'm going to tell you something about testing GraphQL. So before I'm actually going to tell about what testing in GraphQL could look like, I'm going to ask the question, who is this talk actually for? Because a lot of people I know, they actually don't test their code. So they either test the code in production, or they test it just by clicking some buttons and then pushing their features to production. So I'm not saying you should test your code uh, with code. You can also have manual testing or there are uh, services to help you with testing. But you should always think about how to test your code. So like I told you, I'm Roy. I live and work in Amsterdam. And most of my time I spent on working for uh, the city of Amsterdam, where we develop open source products. And we also developed some GraphQL servers built on top of internal APIs. And I also work with some other companies. And you can find me on Twitter with the handle at GetHackTeam. So if you've got some questions after the talks that you couldn't ask in the live chat, then make sure to find me on Twitter. So why write tests? So there are multiple reasons to write tests. And it isn't only to be safe about to be sure about your code, but there are also actual reasons to test your code. So one of the things I really like is check if code behaves as expected. And this is something you can do in a lot of ways because it's really simple to test simple code. So if you you have a function that uh, sums up two numbers, it's really easy to test it that code behaves as expected. But if you have a function that um, calls other functions, maybe it is a composed function, or maybe it's even an entire UI, uh, you want to make sure if the code underneath this test is behaving as expected. And something else I really like to do is check if errors and edge cases are handled correctly. Because a lot of time I write like error messages in my code or I have edge cases that I don't really document. So if you don't document them, probably the next developer working on the project, or maybe even yourself if you look at the code after a year, uh, maybe you don't even know what the code is about anymore. So one of the things I really like te writing tests for is for errors and edge cases. Because edge cases should really be documented. And there are more reasons to test your code, right? So other reasons are making refactoring easy. And especially if you're not using something like TypeScript, uh, just like plain JavaScript, or maybe even like Python, if you start refactoring your code and you don't have any tests in place, it's really hard to make sure that the outcome will be the same. So I talked about the edge cases just before. Uh, if you have edge cases in your code uh, that aren't defined somewhere, like in documentation or in tests, and someone start refactoring, then there's a really big chance those test cases uh, edge cases will get lost. So the next developer will probably write new code, refactors everything, and then maybe that one moment when someone pushes a button from a certain location, your edge case will be gone. And yeah, so it also improves your code quality, in my opinion. So uh, if you're working with code reviews with team members, then probably your codes get better after every review. If you're writing tests for your code and it's really hard to write a test for your code, then probably your code is hard to read. So if you don't have someone to review your code, you should definitely review your own code by writing tests and see how easy it is to write a test for the outcome of your code. And the same as I told about the edge cases, uh, tests can also be, also be documentation for your code. So it improves your code quality, right? Because who likes debugging? And about the documentation, it can really serve as documentation. Because if you look at this function, so this is from a design library I've been working on. So you're going to import some functions, and then you're going to test these functions. And then you can actually write down what your test cases are. So maybe your test case is to check if it returns undefined. Maybe it should throw. Maybe there are other test cases you want to be in there. And especially if you're familiar with test-driven development, and something like this is really helpful, because test-driven development is going to help you document your code before you even write the code, which is actually a really great approach. And this is something you can have for GraphQL as well. Uh, both server side and client side, but we'll have a later we'll have a look at that. So what can we actually test when we're testing GraphQL? So we can test schemas, right? Especially if you're working with schema first designs, or maybe you're programmatically creating your schemas, then you should definitely test those schemas. So you should know 
you want to know if your field is, is actually a string or a number before it uh, goes to the GraphQL query. So you don't want test you don't want to test your schemas on runtime because it's going to throw errors. You actually want to test your schemas maybe in compile time or maybe even just when you're running your test and you're pushing your code to production. So these are ways to test your schemas before actually uh, having users use this schema. And you can also test resolvers, right? Because if you're familiar with resolvers, and you probably are, unless you've only been using GraphQL client side, but you can test resolvers. Resolvers are just functions. They're either async or they're synchronous. They probably have promises in there, and they're probably going to make a connection with uh, a database, external services, maybe internal services. And these are things you can test. So you can test if your resolvers are collecting the right data for your responses as defined in your schema. So you should really have a separate look at testing schemas and resolvers because they're doing different things, but in the end they can come together and they can be the same, uh, they can share the same tests. And are there more things you can test on server side? There probably are, right? Because maybe you can also test performance, performance of your GraphQL server, server side, uh, and maybe do a performance testing, see how many concurrent users you can have, what will go wrong if you're sending the same query like eight different times, or maybe sending the same query with eight different arguments. So these are all things you can do with performance testing. Or like I told you, you can test it client side. And this might be really interesting to test it client side because uh, in that scenario, you're not actually testing GraphQL or how GraphQL works. You're more testing if the, the libraries or packages you're using for GraphQL are working as expected. So with how to test GraphQL, so with the schemas, resolvers, and maybe you want to test how schemas and resolvers work together, right? So how to actually test this? Uh, there are multiple ways. So one of those things you should have in there is static type checking. With static type checking, maybe with TypeScript, or maybe just by utilizing the schema itself, you can make sure that there won't be any incorrect fields in your schema. And also unit tests, like the resolvers I told you about, they are functions. So they could be really easy to test with unit tests. And maybe your resolvers will have helper functions or utilities. Those probably are really good to have unit tests. And integration test is for situation where you want to combine uh, your schema and your resolvers and see if they really have the correct outcome as you expect. So maybe you're going to have an integration test that's actually uh, checking your schema to your resolver and then maybe even sending a query or mutation with it. And then where you can test the entire flow or parts of the flow, which is very similar to end-to-end -to -end tests, right? Because you can imagine there might be an end-to-end -end test where you're testing something client-side, so you're requesting a query client-side, this query is going to be sent to your server, and your server should be handled with the schema and the resolvers. So that way, you're probably testing the entire chain for GraphQL, both client and server side. So that should could be an end-to-end -end test. So the strategy for testing, and probably if you're really into testing or you've read a lot about testing yet, uh, there are different strategies to test your application. No matter if it's a server or a client, there are different ways to test applications. So one popular approach is the pyramid approach. That is probably the oldest one, just as pyramids. There, it's a pretty old approach for testing uh, testing software in general. And there is also the uh, the reverse pyramid. So both are actually patterns you could use for testing. And I'm going to let me tell you about the first one, uh, the first pyramid first. So this is like the traditional pyramid of testing. And as you could see, it's a pyramid. So at the bottom, there's a lot. And at the top, there is less. So usually, uh, you would have um, type checking like right, right down the middle, right uh, below the middle. Because type checking is important. It's really easy to do a lot of type checking. And it also it runs pretty fast. And next to type checking, you also have unit test in there. So unit tests and type checking, according to the traditional pyramid of testing, they should really form the basis, like the fundament of your testing pyramid. And then in the middle, there will be integration tests. Because integration tests, they're a bit harder to write because you're actually going to connect multiple surfaces or pieces of code. And that's why they also run slower. You're not testing a single function or a single uh, object. You're testing uh, multiple functions, how they work together, or maybe even doing some front-end and back-end at the same time. So integration test, you can test like it's more mission critical. It, it takes lower, uh, longer to run. It also takes more time to write. 
they're definitely helpful. And at the top, you can find end-to-end -end tests. And those are really testing your entire chain. So you can imagine these tests are harder to write. They run really slow. So that's the pyramid of testing, right? So you have a pyramid, unit test, uh, integration test in the middle. And at the top, you would have end-to-end -end testing. And then you could have a reverse pyramid. And this is actually, if you talk with business managers, they probably really like the reverse pyramid because reverse pyramid is a lot of end-to-end -end testing. So if you're te asking non-technical people and they want you to test your code, they probably say, yeah, we want to test if someone clicks on my checkout button, if they actually buy the product. But that's something, it's really hard to really test this real good because someone clicks a product in your client, it's going to send requests to servers, it should resolve, it should give information back. So if you're really technical, you probably feel this is an anti-pattern. If you're a business manager, you probably really love having a lot of end-to-end -end testing in there. And then quite recently, or maybe like a few years ago, uh, a new pattern erupted for testing. So out with this anti-pattern, and a new pattern came in, which is actually, it's the Champions League of testing. So this actually is the Champions League trophy, I guess. And actually, the idea about this, at your very core, it is static type checking. So static type checking should be at the base. You would have some, some unit tests above. And you have a lot of integration tests because integration tests, they are important. Integration tests actually test multiple pieces of code together. And end-to-end -end tests, they are at the top. There are, not, uh, there are some less end-to-end -end tests, but there's still quite a lot. But basically, what this pyramid, is, uh, what this trophy is saying, um, every type of function should have their own sort of testing. So you can't test all your code because a co top coverage of 100%, it's really hard to get there. And also integration tests, they're more important because you can test if one function works, you can test if the other function works. It doesn't really mean that both functions will work together. So there are different types of testing. And for GraphQL, I actually like this approach. So you can actually, you can split it around. There are multiple use cases. Resolvers have their own kind of testing. You should definitely test resolvers and schemas together. Maybe you shouldn't test whenever you're sent a query if your resolver is being called right, because your schema can probably handle it. So let's start by looking at testing schemas. And testing schemas, you can do them a lot of different ways. Um, something I really like with testing schemas is you can actually check if your product type, which I've defined on the left, actually matches the product type as you want it to be. So I'm not sure if this test actually says something because you're just testing if, abstract, uh, if your abstract syntax tree from GraphQL on the left side is equal to the right side. So this is a test you could make. I'm not sure if you actually get real advantage out of this test. So for bigger schemas, there are other ways to test it. And one of the packages I really like for this is Easy GraphQL. And Easy GraphQL is actually made by someone who works for, uh, for Cypress, so he's really into testing. And it's really easy to install as well because it's just an NPM package. And you can use it for mocking, for test assertions, so you can test if your schema actually fits certain criteria, if you are allowed to make certain queries. And it looks something like this. So at the very base, you're going to start with importing your schema. Because without a schema, you can't test the schema, right? So basically, you're going to feed your schema to Easy GraphQL Tester, and you'll be able to test assertions to it. But for sending assertions, of course, you should mock it, because you have to make assertions with some kind of data in mind. So you can see it on here. So I'm testing a schema. Uh, you can see it's a query. and I'm going to send a variable in it as well. And at this part with tester.mock, I'm actually going to send my query. I'm going to send my variables. And I'm going to say I want to mock stuff. So now I'm actually testing if review, if the reviews field of my product, if it will be an array. And you can even extend this test by seeing if it will be an array with a certain length, uh, with certain fields in there. So these are things you can quite easily test with this one uh, just by using this package. And it's going to save you a lot of time writing a search in with maybe Enzyme or Jest or whatever you're using on your side. I'm just going to see if your mock actually returns data. And of course, instead of mock data, you can actually use your real data or maybe even create uh, mock data if you want. Or a search in directly. This is actually something I really like because if you look at this one, it saves you a lot of time. If you look at the previous one, so actually, what we're saying here, right here, we have a query. Uh, you've defined the AppSec syntax tree, and you're just going to have GraphQL, easy GraphQL tester see 
if your product ID will return a certain field for something. So now we're actually testing whether my query works. And you can find all the information about this package on this website. You can also just go to npm or GitHub and find the project there. So for schema testing, it's, it's really nice to have easy GraphQL because it saves you tons of time. So resolvers. Resolvers are actually, um, they're a bit different to test, right? Because there are a lot of uh, stuff, there's a lot of stuff at stakes for testing resolvers because maybe you have a database or existing services beneath it. So resolvers, they are a bit more tricky to test, but there's one important thing you should keep in mind. Resolvers should be pure functions. You don't want side effects in resolvers. You want every side of every effect for your schema to have its own resolver, and then you probably want to merge them together later on. So you don't want resolvers to be something else than pure functions. And if they aren't pure functions, it's going to be really hard to test them, but it will be even more important to actually test them because if you don't test functions with side effects, you're probably going probably gonna to regret it later on. So pure functions and your resolvers, actually they should be a black box, right? So you would have this black box, something goes in, maybe it's beer, it's some friends, it goes all go, everything goes in the black box. And what you want to know is the outcome to black box, right? But no matter what happens inside the black box, so your pure function, you're pretty sure it will always be fun. So there will be a lot of fun coming out of your resolvers if you put some friends and beer in there. At least that's what I suppose. But so pure functions should be the same way uh, as this black box. So you send something in and you're pretty sure whatever you send in, it will return something based on what you send in in an expected form. And that's what your resolvers should do, right? Because resolvers, they should give, they get the information for your schema, from your database, for your services, or maybe from computing it somewhere else. So for testing resolvers, it's quite easy to just, um, to just write a search in. So you're gonna send in, so I have a function or maybe a resolver, invite friends, probably linked to a mutation. You're gonna send some uh, variables in there. So six friends, some alcohol, it should be a success, right? So whenever you send this mutation, you're probably gonna be pretty sure that you're gonna invite friends, six in total with some alcohol. The outcome should be success party, and maybe it should mutate some field. So these are all you should do with your resolvers. So in practice, this means something else, right? Because this is all pure theoretically, uh, but you should also write code to do this for you. So you would have a resolver, it could be something like this. So maybe you're getting reviews for certain products. We just saw someone talking about an e-commerce store. Uh, this could actually be a resolver for that e-commerce store if it was written in JavaScript, right? So you're gonna send uh, the parent object in there, which is probably a product, or maybe it's reviews, some arguments and the context. And it's gonna return probably the reviews. So it's a pure function, there are no side effects, you aren't calling anything in between. And then to test this pure function, you can, if you're using JavaScript, like I usually do, or TypeScript, you can just use yes for it. So we're gonna test if this resolver will return the reviews. So we have an object, it probably should fit this object, you're gonna see if it equals, and it does. So this is all you need to do if you're testing resolvers. So maybe you have some normalizations in there, you probably should test those normalizations as well. And then we get to a bit more tricky part, right? Because we already saw schema testing, which can be done with easy GraphQL tester. We saw resolver testing, which should be done with Jest or uh, whatever is your uh, programming language you're using. An integration test, actually, you're gonna bring these two together. So you wanna test your schemas with your resolvers, your resolvers with your schemas. You want to test if queries work, mutations work, if they generate the right information, if they mutate, whatever you want them to mutate. So these are stuff you do in integration tests. And like I told you, integration tests, they will be a bit harder to write than unit testing. And you can actually see the schema testing we did as sort of a unit test for your schema. So we're actually gonna bring back multiple unit tests together, right? We have a unit test for schemas, a unit test for resolvers, and now we're gonna write an integration test that's gonna see how they work together. And for this, you actually, you need to mock your server because you need some, you need to get some information from somewhere and yeah, so mocking is probably the easiest because if you aren't mocking at this point, you're probably testing against your real server with your real client, which you shouldn't actually want to do. And integration tests, they're also a bit funny to me because you can test if two functions work together, but it doesn't mean the entire house is built correctly. So maybe you're just testing, oh, I built a new house, let's see, 
oh, I've got working electrics and I got a front door. It doesn't mean you have a house. So integration tests, they aren't like the holy grail, but it's a step towards the getting to that holy grail. So Apollo has some cool functions for do, to do this, to have server mocking and have integration tests. So assume we're using Apollo server, you're just gonna set the mocks variable to true. So this is the, if you're gonna instantiate a new Apollo server, you have some fields, some options you could put in there and you're just gonna say mocks is true. So now Apollo server will mock uh, whatever you're using with your schema resolvers. And you can actually try this together with Postman. So I'm using Postman for mostly when I work with REST APIs, I want to get the return of the REST API, but now Postman also have an option to send uh, GraphQL. So you can use GraphQL queries in Postman uh, from just from the interface. And basically it means you should have uh, a pretty new version of Postman installed. But it means you can uh, send GraphQL queries just from Postman. So instead of using GraphQL Playground, you can just stick with the tools you already have like Postman. And I've created a test for this uh, with some code here as well. Uh, it's probably uh, easier if I send you a link afterwards as well. So you can actually see the code, see what I did there, and see how I'm testing my server, uh, GraphQL. So schemas and resolvers, that kind of stuff. So on the client side, there's other stuff you can test as well. Because we've uh, so far, we just covered servers. And servers are usually easier to test uh, than clients because the only thing that happens, you have schemas, resolvers, you're sending some stuff on and on. If you're testing client side, we also have to test um, the tools we're using. So my preferred tool for the front end is React. So which means if I'm testing client side, I should also test React. So I should test if I can send refs, how to handle local state, all that kind of stuff. It will be a test as well. So client side testing is a bit more complicated. But it probably looks something like this. So what I've done over here, I've used a Apollo query component and I'm sending a query to get some product information. Well, the query component returns me some variables like loading, error data, and I'm gonna map those. And this is like a pretty simple front-end application, right? I'm just gonna get some data with a query and I'm gonna display it in the application. And something we actually want to test is this component, right? We want to see if our query component returns the query. Hence, so forth, we want to test the query component actually renders all the other stuff that we put in there, like how to display the products. It should actually run the right on this scenario. So for this, uh, there are things you can use and something you can use is the mock provider from React Apollo. And also you should need some sort of uh, testing, li testing library for React. So in this scenario, I went for test renderer from React. You can also use React testing library or Enzyme to do this for you. So the first thing you need to do, we actually need to mock the GraphQL client. You don't want to work with the real GraphQL client because then you're probably gonna test Apollo's product. Well, actually they should test their own product, right? So we want to test the code that's in there, so we're gonna mock a provider so we don't have to deal with actually live data or maybe any other data that shouldn't be in our mocks. And a test pretty much look like this. So you should mock your data, mock the response of the query component, like we did on the right side. And on the left side, you can see we have a mock provider, we're sending mock data, uh, we're gonna render our products component, and we're gonna see if a product component is rendering the correct products. So actually we're gonna see, we're gonna look for a H3 element and we're gonna find it on our component and then we're gonna expect this H3 element to be displaying the title test. And if this all works, it works. And we can also use snapshots for this, but I'm not really a fan of snapshots. So I would probably prefer to go just by seeing is the title set correctly? Do I have the correct amount of products rendered? These are all things you can easily test client side. And for this, I also created some code. And again, I will post this code later on so you can uh, display it on your own. You can, I will also post it on my Twitter after this. So this is a really pretty basic forward um, example of testing client side React with GraphQL. And for end-to-end -end testing, there is more stuff you can do because end-to-end -end testing, like we told you, you're gonna test the entire chain of GraphQL and your client application and your server together. So, for this, we're gonna use the, almost the same tools, except for this time, we're gonna be using the actual Apollo provider instead of mocking it. So before we use the mock one, which means we're not really testing a server. This one, we're gonna go for Apollo providers who could actually gonna test our server. 
which is a bit more exciting, right? Because now a server comes in place. Before we just mocked everything, now a server might send us some actual responses. And I believe the example for this is also in this code sandbox as well. So if you would open this link, you would go to a code sandbox, and you can actually find um, how to do this. So we covered end-to-end -end testing. And for dessert, something that I haven't told you just yet is you can also use performance. Um, you can also use load testing to see what your performance of your of your GraphQL server will be. So in the in the beginning, I already told you that you could do some other test server side like performance testing. And for this, there's a package called Easy GraphQL uh, Load Tester, which is pretty great. Let me see if we can get this up right there. So basically, uh, it just kind of takes you some config, and it's the same package as we saw before, uh, but then a different version. So Easy GraphQL is the package that I showed you before to test your schema. You can also use it for load testing. Basically, is this one. And if you are already familiar with load testing, you can see you can already use the tools that you use uh, for other load tests as well. Because let me see where it is. You can use it with artillery, which might ring a bell if you've lo used load testing before. And I believe there's also some other tool you can use it with. Oh no, for now it's basically using artillery IO. So in here you can um, have some config in there. You can set a duration, like how much you want to test. You can set an arrival rate. You can set some headers. And it's all based on a single JSON file. So you're going to send queries with it, with arguments, get more information out there. You're going to test against local servers. You're going to have selected queries, headers. And this is actually very basic getting started with load testing for GraphQL servers. And if you aren't familiar with this, definitely check it out. Um, because you know one of the reasons GraphQL servers should be really tested, uh, should be tested really well is because you could get performance issues. If you look at the GitHub API, um, they actually expose two APIs. One is with REST, one is with GraphQL. And the, uh, the response li limits for the GitHub uh, REST API are way higher than for the GraphQL API. So you can send like 10 times or 100 times more requests on the REST server than you can do on the GraphQL server. And that's because with all those nested relationships, it can get quite tricky to get all the data that you request. So that's why you definitely should check out load testing. So to summarize what I've told, and sorry, <laughs> I usually speak very quickly, so it's a lot of information. So to summarize, I talked about testing GraphQL. And we're going to use, you can you should use static type checking for it. So type checking really is important when working with GraphQL because your schema has types. So probably if your code doesn't have types, you're going to run into problems sometime. We also have unit tests because resolvers, they're pure functions. We can just use unit tests to, to test our resolvers. And the same goes for the schema. You can also use unit tests for your schemas using the package I showed you. And integration tests, they're, they're one of the most important things to do. So you want to test how your schema works with your resolvers, how your schema works with your client. If your client is actually going to send requests, how to handle those requests. These are things you would do in integration tests. And then to end this, yeah, we saw we can just use them, right? So you can mock our provider when you're using client side. We can also choose to have our actual provider in there and test against our live server, or maybe our test server, or set up all other sort of testing principles with both client side and server side at the very same time. And load testing, which was sort of a small dessert I gave you at the end. Uh, but definitely check out that package because you might be really amazed by how your GraphQL server performs when using it and sending like five or six queries at the same time. But maybe you're really shocked. But definitely have a, have a look and see how it actually performs before sending the GraphQL server into production. And the very last thing I want to give you with you is 100% test coverage doesn't mean you don't have any bugs. Like bugs will always be there in any code, no matter if the code is 20 year old or one year old, there will always be some bugs and testing is a way to reduce the amount of bugs to make your code more stable, to improve your code experience. Um, it shouldn't be a game to get to 100% test coverage because if you're writing one future and you can test 80% of it, probably that's enough. If you can't test that last 20%, and those last 20% is the most important part of your code, then you did something wrong. Because you should also, also test the important part of your code, but you don't want to test components when you're probably pretty sure it will render 
or a drone vendor. So pick your battles and don't try to get to 100% test coverage because bugs will always be there. Tests should just be there to streamline you and to reduce the amount of bugs. So for this, maybe we can take this one offline. So which do you actually prefer? Do you still prefer the old fashioned pyramid of testing? Or are you actually gonna go with something a bit more modern where there is like an almost even spread with integration tests, unit tests, and end-to-end -end tests? Because it takes a lot of time to write end-to-end -end tests, but they can be really helpful, right? So let's take this conversation maybe to the chat and see which one do you prefer. And so yeah, if you want to learn more, Definitely find me on YouTube, just search for my name and you will find tons of videos about me talking about React or GraphQL. Uh, or just find me on Twitter or Instagram, which you can find me with the username GetHackTeam. Or have a look at these other two websites to find out more about uh, GraphQL and testing GraphQL, both client side and server side. So let's head over to the chat and see if there are any questions from you. Thank, thanks so much, Roy. Uh, I, re I really, I really enjoyed the, the talk. It was, it was, it was great. I think like testing with such a like new technology as a, a TypeScript, GraphQL, and React together uh, is, is is something that we have to like figure out. Other people they have to try to have more information about it in order to adopt into their production ready apps. Uh, so is there yeah. not there's there's not a there are not a questions in YouTube right now, but I do have a questions. Um, so lately, I've been working on a like 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 kind of full stack developer, a doing always same like uh, um, GraphQL, like like Node and TypeScript in the backend side with GraphQL and API, and then React, and you know like a taking advantage of a the the the, the, the GraphQL schema as a single sort of truth to have a both for both sides for uh, from the server side from the front side all my types, as I know that you do a uh, useful for doing that, which is great. And a, mm -hmm. but but I'm 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 trying I'm trying to figure out the, the the way that I might have a better like let's say speed when I'm developing new features in my front end side. So let me put you in context. So let's say we are going to have a TypeScript with GraphQL with React. So now in React yeah. we are going to use a uh, let's say Apollo. That's fine. So um, I know that you know like like testing is super important and a we should do like integration tests, unit tests. But let's say that I'm gonna, you know, extend all my types from my graphics schema. So I'm gonna have, let's say, that I'm gonna be using GraphQL code gen, and I'm gonna use a Red hooks. So I'm gonna type all the return data from my from my API, and also I'm gonna have like like 100% test coverage in my GraphQL side in the server side. So you know, if something goes wrong, I'm gonna get even a custom error with a specific error that I had in my backend side, and I'm gonna extend all that information to the front side. So we, let's say that we have that. So now in the front end side. Because let's say if I'm like fetching a, a, a users and I'm gonna have the type for it and I'm gonna have the like the guarantee that a GraphQL is gonna return me the data that I'm asking for. If not, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a custom error. How do you see mm -hmm. writing unit tests for like simple operation as a fetch data um, works well uh, when you have to create a new feature? So let's say that tomorrow I'm gonna create a new feature in the dashboard of my application. So would you implement unit tests for like, let's say that I'm gonna fetch the user and just display them. Would you create a unit test uh, for that, a, let's say new feature that you were to implement or you would rather like uh, um, like be confident in the guarantee that GraphQL is gonna give you, let's say like GraphQL together with TypeScript, uh, extending those types? Um, yeah, probably if you set up a project like that with having TypeScript, uh, on the front and back end, automatically generate your components from uh, your yep. schema. You probably save yourself a lot of time writing tests that are a bit useless. So that's a good start. Um, so I'm not really sure on your scenario because um, I guess if you're statically creating uh, those components from schemas, then probably the only thing you need to yep. test is uh, if React is doing what React should be doing. Okay. Uh, so that's okay. The perfect. That that's the, I, I think kind of the first question that you really answered it. And then so let's say that I have, I have this component, and that component is gonna have like several states that is gonna mutate the like behavior of that component. Then mm -hmm. is when you are suggesting to do unit testing in order to ensure that that is gonna do that. Let's say like a stateful a uh, component container in React, it is gonna do the mutation in the state that it should do. Right? Is that correct? Yeah, so what you want to test is when you press a certain button, will a mutation will be 
uh, will the document documentation be sent uh, using your query component or whatever you're using? So those are things you would actually want to test. And for the rest, it's basically GraphQL should work uh, with that correctly because otherwise there's something wrong with the components you automatically created and you shouldn't create components that you automatically create because, yeah, otherwise you should just write them yourself yeah. if you don't trust them. Yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. Um, and just like quick last quick question, uh, a, um, are you running low tests, like, like high performance tests in your current application? And what would be the best way to start with that? Because I didn't do that yet. And I think um, yeah. I'm going to do that right after the meetup. <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> um, no, so basically, I'm not running them uh, a lot of times. I basically run I'm constructing a new GraphQL server and I'm testing different ways of schema implementations. That's when I actually use it. Okay. That's so great. you want to test your schema implementation when you choose to, uh, for functions to have its own resolver or maybe have a resolver inside another resolver. Those are ways you can actually test with load testing, see if you can run into any performance issues. Okay. That's, yeah, that's, that's great. It's, it sounds great. And I think easy GraphQL it helps you a lot in order to set this up, right? Yeah, it helps you a lot. And basically, um, you, it's using artillery I.O. Uh, underneath it. So that shouldn't be too hard to get started with as well. OK, that's perfect. So um, so yeah, we are going to go with Kartik now. So thanks so much, Roy, for joining us from France. From yes, Sun. no and problem. I, Glad to be here. Yeah. And, like sir, yeah, <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will, I will, I will, I will offer you. Yes, and uh, yeah, thanks, thanks so much for selling this such incredible knowledge. So 